Um, hi everybody, I'm Jade Applegate, and as I mentioned, I'm a software engineer here at Fastly. I work on an excellent team that focuses on improving our user experience, and I also want to plug us. We're hiring Ember developers, so please speak to one of us if any of this piques your interest. So tonight I'd like to share with you uh, how we rely on tests to guide us in refactoring and evolving our Ember code base. Uh, we are moving away from an untested backbone coffee script app, which to us feels a lot like this. And we're building a more beautiful, reliable, tested, componentized Ember application, which feels a little bit more like this. And uh, what we're doing is a complete rewrite of our customer user interface, where they can configure their services to use Fastly, see real-time analytics, historical data, and billing and account information. So, tests, sorry to bring up the T word, um, but I do so because uh, tests have a lot to do with how we're writing our new application. And there are many ideas floating around on whether or not testing is a good idea, or whether you should test or should not test your application, and plenty of schools of thought on how you should test your application. But I'm not here to convince you to test in your application, but I will show you how having tests in our Ember application has benefited us when we do our refactors. Uh, we aren't fanatical about TDD, but at the end of the day, we agree on the amount of test coverage that works for us. Our testing philosophy um, is that every feature should be adequately tested, either in the form of unit or integration tests. And we use these tools to help us test um, Ember Q unit, Ember CLI Mirage. Uh, we've recently moved to Mirage and away from using stubs in all of our tests. So that's a current refactor that we're doing. Uh, we rely on PhantomJS, and we've written many custom test helpers to allow us to write integration tests in a more rapid and readable format. Um, this is also useful when we refactor tests because we have to write less code. My eyesight is not as good as they thought it was. So here's an example of a test helper that we've created. Uh, this one helps us find uh, button text when we're writing tests. It's pretty simple, but as you can see, it takes care of the logic that we would have to include every time we were finding a button inside of a test, and it handles several cases. Another example of a custom helper is this one, which helps us find inline validation in a test when there are error cases. Again, not incredibly complicated, but it's straightforward and cleans up a lot of our test code. Uh, another upside with this is that um, if there are several engineers working in the same code base, you get a bit of consistency in your tests as everyone, if everyone is using the same helpers. And that makes refactoring tests easier too. So let me show you how these helpers are used in our tests. Um, here's a test for authentication. We're testing the case of a user failing to enter their email address when signing in. And this test uses both of the helpers we just looked at, and there are um, these are especially helpful if you're testing several similar fields within the same test, like if you were testing all of the inline validations in a form. And that can become quite lengthy, so uh, using a test helper will help reduce the amount of code you have in your test. Um, as I mentioned, it makes having the test helpers also makes them easier to read. There are less lines of code, and they provide uh, consistent syntax across all of your application, regardless who is writing it. So a caveat about test helpers. Um, you don't want to make them too specific. For example, you might have a find button helper and think, wow, what if we had a helper for finding every type of button? What a great idea. That's actually a really bad idea. Um, we did something similar, and we found that we frequently forgot about all of the cool new helpers that we wrote. And we kept falling back on using the more generic ones. So just a bit of a warning here. Don't go overboard with writing test helpers, although they are fun and useful in moderation. Um, as I mentioned, all the features in our application are tested, and we rely on this coverage when we refactor because it provides a source of truth for us regarding user behavior. And now that I've shown you what we use to test and how to get that baseline data, uh, here are some best practices our team follows in terms of when to refactor something. Uh, one is a code smell. You think something's not right, and you've come across something in your uh, code that smells to you, and you think there's, it's probably time to do something about it. 
uh, this is a good case for further investigation and potentially refactoring. Uh, one example is you're constantly editing the same file every time you're writing a feature, so that file might be too involved. Um, a refactor you could do would be to find ways to break up that file, which would in turn make your application more stable. Um, another example from our team was when we were working on adding modal dialogues. We realized that we really, as a group, didn't understand how the closed trigger property worked, and we introduced a lot of bugs. Um, an earlier refactor of our modal functionality would have helped us to avoid all of this. Uh, second time when you would uh, want to consider refactoring is when you're adding new features. Uh, we like to have reusable components in our application, which is something that Ember makes very easy. And when you're in the planning process of your feature, we try to think of ways we could potentially refactor some existing portion of our application to handle mul multiple cases. So one common refactor on our team is to make components more generic and reusable rather than adding more complexity. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, another reason to refactor is the three times rule. So you're repeating yourself for the third time and you think there's probably a more modular way to complete the task. Uh, this is a good case for a refactor. Um, for example, you're implementing something for the third time and it's very similar to the last two times that you implemented it. So perhaps there's a way to refactor your code and write a method that would handle all three cases rather than building upon your bespoke web application. Um, this goes along with uh, don't repeat yourself, so it's a good idea to refactor in order to keep things dry. Um, finally, another reason to refactor your code is to upgrade to the latest shiny new release of Ember. Um, and of course this comes with its own challenges. Uh, there are a lot of deprecation warnings to fight with, and perhaps doing this upgrade um, might cause you quite a bit of work, but sometimes it's a worthwhile and important uh, endeavor in order to keep your application up to date. One thing that's helped us feel very confident in these refactors and upgrades is that we can run our test suite and see what breaks. Usually since the refactor is typically just changing the under the hood functionality and not the user behavior, the test will still pass. So for us, it's this reliable system that helps us to feel good about the state of our application after a refactor and without the tests, we would have to rely on manual QA or just crossing our fingers that hopefully everything is okay. And we've relied on that before. I hope you can remember the apocalyptic Golden Gate Bridge. That was the situation we were in. So speaking of the latest Ember practices, I'd like to show you an example. Uh, we recently switched to using services in our application rather than having our Ajax calls in our components. Uh, this, of course, involved a fair bit of work in terms of our refactor, but since we weren't changing any of the user behavior, we could rely on our tests to guide us as we embarked on this project. So once we moved all of the Ajax calls into a service, since we were using services, we had this very long file. This is a section of it. Here's a little bit more. Um, immediately, we noticed that all the methods were really quite similar, in fact, almost identical. Um, so we were really failing on the don't repeat yourself principle. And as it turned out, we had about 30 of these CRUD methods, one for each type of functionality in our application. And all that was really different was the endpoint that we would be hitting in the API. So we saw this as an opportunity to refactor our code and come up with a few general purpose methods that could handle these cases. So we came up with the idea to treat all of these re as resources and developed a CRUD action for each resource. Then in those, we just passed the payload, which contains the endpoint that we needed to go to. And these were able to replace all of the methods that you just saw in the last few slides and a lot of other ones that I didn't want to bore you with. Um, it reduced the lines of code in our application. It was more modular and it was easier to maintain. And best of all, doing this didn't break a single test because it didn't impact user behavior. So we felt confident in our refactor. Um, so this refactor hit upon several of our best practices for when to refactor. It, there was a code smell. We had definitely done the work more than three times. And we were uh, trying to keep up with the latest in the Amber community by using services. Um, we weren't adding a feature, but it did make new features easier to add in the future. So here's an example of a test for one of those CRUD actions. Um, in this case, it's delete. 
uh, since our tests are based on user behavior, we can refactor the code and feel confident that the changes that we made will still allow our tests to pass. So I hope this has given you some ideas on how you can use tests to assist you in more confidently refactoring your Ember application. And in summary, there's a few takeaways. One, you should rely on tests to guide you when you refactor. They really are your canary in the coal mine. Uh, two is to write test helpers to assist you in testing your features, but don't go overboard. And finally, keep in mind the best practices of when to refactor. Code smells, adding new features, the three times rule, and when you're upgrading your application. I hope this information has been useful to you, and thank you for your attention. I can take a few questions now if there's time. So I, I just have a question for comparison purposes. Um, what's the test coverage you have on the app? <clears throat> um, our previous app had zero test coverage. Um, I don't know a percentage right now off the top of my head, but I know that we have over 1,000 tests. Um, so it's pretty well, uh, well covered. It's not 100%, but we are getting there. Um, and we really are trying to avoid situations where I'll write the feature now and do the test later, because as we know, that never really happens. Um, or by the time you get to it, things have changed. So we really try to stick to if you're adding a feature or you're testing it, um, hopefully to get closer to that 100% goal. Thanks. Absolutely. Um, it seems like you're mostly doing like an integration test, no unit tests. We do have some unit tests. Um, we mostly spent our time doing unit tests when we were really just getting started with our application. And now that we have those in place, we are more focused on integration tests um, and kind of making sure that we have that end-to-end -end user interaction in place. But we do have both. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you.